Good afternoon from Belgium. Happy to be here, your guest and your host at uh, the last of our side events of the online hate MOOC, which is the Teach Meet. We are happy that uh, we found uh, some uh, very nice uh, speakers who will uh, come uh, to the floor in a moment. Uh, but anyway, uh, when you uh, listen to the presentations, please write all the questions you may have in the chat so that they can take the questions after their presentation. If you make screenshots of what uh, the presenters offer you, nice slides, uh, maybe tools, and etc., please take a screenshot and, and post it on Twitter with the online hate book hashtag so that uh, other people can uh, uh, share uh, and, and, and also enjoy what you see here. Uh, also, the recording will be added uh, tomorrow or the day after to the platform. So here we go with uh, our online teach meet. Now, a teach meet, uh, you may have heard of it of, or you may have uh, uh, taken part in it, is something that uh, is not that old. It started in 2006 with uh, some, some teachers uh, going to the pub on a Friday night. And you know uh, what people do, they talk about uh, work. And uh, after some reflection, they thought, well, in fact, uh, I learned quite a lot. I drank some beers, but uh, also I come back from the pub with some uh, very good night ideas for the, for the classroom practice. So, and this is uh, how they uh, designed uh, the format of, of the Teach Meet. It's informal, it's, it's uh, after work in, in, in an environment. It could be a pub or, or somewhere else. But there is some organization behind it. it it's, it's, it's structure, structured. Um, so they share the best practices, they share the best experiences and ideas. And since then, uh, many um, groups of teachers have done this type of uh, uh, personal development in an informal way called uh, the Teach Meet. Uh, so the presentations uh, should be prepared, short presentations. Uh, now, of course, we are here with an online teach meet, and that's a different uh, setting. Uh, I started uh, with it uh, together with, with uh, a friend of mine uh, organizing these online teach meets, which have been very successful as well, because we could uh, not only involve people that were in the pub, but uh, people from, from the globe. And in fact, uh, this is what we do here as well. Uh, so you will have your, your beer or your cup of tea at home. And then you can listen to uh, some nice ideas of, of colleagues. Now, uh, during a, a teach meet, uh, we uh, normally have also the, the, the back channel, as we call it. Uh, so that's the hashtag uh, that you use to share the ideas you pick uh, from, uh, from your colleagues that you hear at the teach meet. Now, I want to tell you um, the numbers of the, of the MOOC have been uh, quite nice. Uh, by now, of course, the, the course is almost ending. We have uh, 1,160 uh, uh, participants, and uh, yeah, a few of them are here now to, to volunteer uh, in, the, in the Teach Meet, uh, which uh, I'm very happy about. So here we go. After this introduction, I would like to give the floor in a moment to um, Stella Floras. Uh, she's from, from Greece. And uh, please, uh, Stella, um, uh, show your webcam and uh, unmute yourself so that we hear your voice. And then uh, I wish you uh, good luck with your presentation. So if you can click on uh, your webcam and then you click on uh, share your webcam and then you go ahead. Okay. You are there. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We, we don't see you yet. Okay. Now? How about now? I've, it's green. My camera is green. Start. Yeah. Well, Okay, start sharing. That's what we need to see. So it goes in, in, uh, in two ways. Okay. So, okay, please go ahead with your presentation, introduce yourself, and then you click on to the other uh, slides. You can talk. Hello, Stella. We heard you well, but now you seem to be gone.
Okay, Stella, can you talk? Please go ahead. Uh, ah, okay, now I see what, what happened. Sorry for this. Uh, I need to make her presenter again. She was out, apparently. Okay, Stella, now you should be able to, to speak. Okay. If you have problems with your, with your webcam, don't worry. Uh, the most important thing is that we hear your voice. So can you... Uh, yeah, yeah, we can hear you. So please go ahead. Okay. okay. So hello, everyone. Sorry about that. My name is Stella Flora, actually, not Floras, and I'm from Athens, Greece. And I'm a teacher, I'm a trainer, and I'm also a life coach. I have been working with children all my life, and the, the topic of my presentation is something very close to my heart, empowering children. Yeah, so you. could Could you please... On the slides, please? Wait... Okay. You have the arrow. Yuck. Where do I have to click? You have to the arrow under the slide to the right. Okay. If you don't find it, then you just say click and I will do it. Okay. No, I cannot see my presentation at all. Ah, oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You told me. You yeah. totally told me. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> so, so, so. Uh, Bart told me that it can be longer, it won't be that long, don't worry. So what I'm going to talk to you in this presentation, after I thank uh, Bart and the Selma Project for giving me this opportunity, is the fourth pilot, in my humble opinion, of hacking online hate, which is empowering children. The other three, of course, being becoming an advocate, becoming an educator, and becoming an activist. Uh, well, uh, I think that all of us are educators in here. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, going online these days is much like entering your packed classroom when flu season is upon us. You are bound to be attacked by bacteria. No matter what you do, the bacteria is there and it will attack you. Now, you, there's a lot you can do. For example, you can air the room, right? You can educate the children, like wash your hands and the coughing to your elbow and everything. Also, you can make sure all the surfaces are disinfected. And uh, you can also educate the parents and send that sick kiddo home. But no matter what you do, some bacteria are bound to find their way to your nose and throat and you'll get sick. So what do you do? You reinforce your immune system, right? Like uh, stop smoking maybe, mm, drink lots of orange juice, vitamin C pills, uh, some vaccine, your flu shot, right? The exact same thing happens on the internet. Adversity is unavoidable, I'm sorry to say. Everyone with an online presence is bound to face some kind of challenge. It could be something mundane, like uh, a funny comment under your new haircut pic saying, LOL, oh my, OMG, what happened to your hair, girl? You look like a hedgehog. Or to something way more serious, like uh, intimidation, threats, online hate, public shaming, everything. Now, what we need to do, of course, be proactive, educate, be activists and advocates, but also we need to provide users and future users with those coping mechanisms they can use to minimize the long-term consequences of this hate which really, really hurts and which could simply destroy someone. What we need to do is help them to develop the coping mechanisms to deal with the stress and the frustration in any given situation. Now, how can we do that? The key to everything is resilience. I hope you can see this picture clearly. I wish I'd I zoomed in a bit. 
Resilience is the ability to bounce back after you have been faced with a challenging or threatening circumstance. Much like this tree over there, I cannot think of anything more challenging or threatening than losing the ground uh, beneath your roots in this case. But look at it. Look how inspiring that is. Not only did it manage to survive, but also to thrive. So how do we do that? How do we empower people? How do we empower the children? There is a saying that I'm fully committed to, which says, empowerment comes only through responsibility. Have you heard that? You must have heard it. So, before I move to my next slide, uh, I would like your help. My, I would like to run a little test. So, can we all close your eyes for three seconds, please? Okay, are you with me? Eyes closed, everybody? Good. Now, I want you to picture little Johnny. Johnny's a little boy. When I tell you, Johnny is a very responsible boy. Have you got the picture? Okay. I hope you do. Now, many of you probably pictured something like that, right? Johnny is a responsible boy who does his homework, who's polite and respectful, who takes care of his siblings, of his younger siblings, and whose room is spick and span. I want to ask you something. You can answer in your head if you want. Did anyone ever tell little Johnny or little Maria or little Stella or little Bart that he is also responsible for his feelings and that actually he has control over them? Let me show you what I mean. This is a very basic human experiential mo model. All of us, no matter what race, what color, what na nationality, we experience life in this very same way. Everything that happens in our life is a life event. Uh, this uh, presentation is a life event and one I hope you're enjoying. But I'm not going to use this presentation as an example. I'm going to use something most of you will be familiar with, the situation, especially us living in the south of uh, Europe. You're driving, the lot, you're driving to school in the morning in your car, you're happy, you're listening to your radio, playing your favorite song, when suddenly, out of nowhere, there's this other car right behind you, flashing the lights, blowing on his horn, you look through the mirror, you see him voicing some something, you imagine it's swear words and he wants you to move out of the way because he has to go. This is your life event. Whenever something happens to us, our brain automatically assigns a meaning to it. It gives a label, which is actually our opinion. It's not a fact. So, most people in this case, <clears throat> would assign um, what kind of meaning? Let's say they would say, oh my God, what a jerk. Who do you think you are, mister? Do you think that your business is more important than my business? So when you assign this label, it invokes an emotion. What emotion do you think it would invoke? Anger, of course. This particular emotion, when then trigger a reaction, which could be, you could start swearing, or in some extreme cases of extreme road rage, you might stop the car, get out, pick a fight, and show him who's, who's boss, right? Have you seen this happening around you? So, this reaction, which stems from the emotion, leads to an outcome. The worst case scenario, you end up in hospital. Best case scenario, you've ruined your day. And then this will trigger other life events. It's a cycle. So if you go to school in that foul mood, you might 
be you might lose it and lose your patience and raise your voice to a child and hurt him or offend a colleague or anything so where's your responsibility let's move time back go back to the meaning and assign a different meaning to the guy trying to get ahead of you what if you choose to say well maybe he will get fired if he's late what if he got a call from his school from his kids school and there's been an accident what emotion do you get very different right because you chose to assign a different label so you feel empathy for the person you pull right or left you're in the UK and then he goes pull back into your lane start humming despacito and arrive at school have a happy camper this is a model you can use to create role plays for any person of any age we work with the people we work with the children we work with ourselves and practice 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 so that every time that a life event occurs we have control we control the situation and so we develop resilience now I have prepared these are four activities I use with uh, my students my clients and my friends the first one is uh, if you're all teachers of course is carrying coal to Newcastle or bringing an owl to Athens as my ancient uh, my ancestors used to say obviously we used to have lots of owls back then so role play we all know the value of role play but what kind of role play is that we start using real material from our own social media where there's hate where there is uh, shaming where there's intimidation and with the kid the teenager whoever we practice how we should respond in each situation we can try and explore feelings how does it make you feel what kind of a person do you think he is and then we can practice assigning different labels and this way the future users will not be intimidated they won't be scared they will be prepared when they come across adversity on the internet the next one I call the cookie trash monster uh, all you need is a, a dustbin blue one okay two ping pong balls felt tip pen a cookie and here we're trying to create a frame on the mind of the child of, or of anyone working with this activity so we write down in different slips of paper uh, comments some of them can be insulting some can be hateful some can be loving some can be silly and then together with the child we decide we decide sorry uh, which of those comments are useful for us so we keep them and which ones are good enough only for Donald Donald is the name of my trash can so if you practice enough with a child there's a very good chance that later in life when something when they read something bad their brain will say mm, I don't need that but Donald would love it two more activities you could practice one on a daily basis and one whenever something bad happens two things I did very w well today this is very useful for anyone who's trying who's working on their self-confidence and they need to build it up so anything no matter how small we put it in our notebook and every day we congratulate we pat ourselves on the back for the good things we do and the last one a couple of my friends told when I was here reviewing this activity uh, told me isn't it a bit fatalistic every time something bad happens to you 
you think of three things that could be worse? Well, you know what? As people, we take it too much for granted. And we forget to celebrate today. So this particular activity helps us instill, helps us develop gratitude. So gratitude, in my humble opinion, is one of the qualities that create strong and happy people. And as I draw to the end of my presentation, I would like to bid you adieu with a verse from one of my favorite poems by Maya Angelou. It's called, Still I Rise. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. Thank you so much for listening. That was a great, great talk, uh, Stella. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy that uh, you got uh, a bit more space to, uh, to explain everything in detail. Um, so that's, uh, that's lovely. Uh, so the chat is there now uh, for everyone to give some uh, additional uh, uh, questions. But meanwhile, I will suggest that we start with the next speaker and then we can have a look uh, at uh, the questions at the very end. So here we go with our next speaker from uh, Ukraine. Um, so that's Natalia. I was a bit struggling with, with the spelling, Natalia. Chachenko, uh, you have an alternative um, writing of your name as well. Um, well, anyway, you can explain for yourself. So please show your web. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me, Bart? Thank you. So first of all, I would like to uh, greet everybody and to thank uh, Bart and his team for um, such a nice opportunity for for teachers, yes, for teachers, for educators to to do a, a course, a training course, and to uh, share, to have an opportunity to share um, some ideas. So I am Natalia Tkachenko. Uh, I am a teacher of English. I am from uh, Ukraine. And uh, uh, I have like very uh, rich teaching experience. I'm also a um, part-time um, vice headmaster responsible for teaching foreign languages at my school. Uh, okay, it seems to me it doesn't. My presentation doesn't move. Uh, but sorry, can you help me move my presentation? So you just say click and then I will do it. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I am also um, their uh, original coordinator of their uh, Generation Global program, and that is why I decided to share uh, to share with my colleagues uh, my school experience uh, experience and their. Uh, um, in my team, I have 20 schools, um, 20 schools that are active participants of Generation Global program, and <clears throat> I decided to share uh, this experience as this is the platform where we teachers can uh, um, involve our students uh, to um, to various uh, to various activities. Please, next slide. So, first of all, I should say that the program um, was uh, started by uh, Tony Blair Face Foundation. I think you know that Tony Blair is a famous politician, ex Prime Minister of Great Britain. He uh, founded the Institute for Global Change and uh, <clears throat> At the very beginning, the program was called Face to Face, but uh, now it is called Generation Global. And there, on this very slide, you can see um, their link, uh, the link of this uh, program in case if some uh, 
teachers uh, are interested and would like to join this program, you are welcome to use this link. And this is the logo. Uh, so Tony Blair is uh, uh, thinks and uh, um, is confident, is sure that uh, educating the next generation is the way to peace. As we are talking today about uh, about uh, how to teach young people to be respectful, to be friendly, yes, how to re to react to to hate speech. Uh, and uh, I am also uh, sure that uh, education is of great importance to avoid conflicts, to avoid hatreds. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so, what uh, can uh, teachers and students, what can students do on this platform? So, first of all, uh, there are online video conferences. Uh, there is a schedule of video conferences uh, and the teachers can easily pick up uh, the time and the topic that they are interested in. Uh, the languages are English, uh, English first of all, Arabic, Italian. Uh, besides, sorry, I didn't mention that uh, in this program there are uh, schools from 70 countries and I see here colleagues from Italy uh, there are schools from Italy and my school once had a dialogue an online dialogue with students from Italy it was really nice to speak to students to exchange their uh, they are to listen to their experience opinion okay and there, at a time there could be four schools or uh, talking for schools sharing their um, opinion, their experience on the topic that uh, that they have chosen. Okay, another activity is online digital dialogue or team blogging. So what does it mean? Uh, we pick up a, a topic uh, which uh, students can be um, can be discussing for some weeks, usually three of or four weeks. And there is one question for each week. The students are, um, as soon as the t teachers create accounts of students on this platform, uh, the students will be automatically divided into uh, groups with their peers from different countries, so from different schools, uh, which are going to take part in team blogging. So, uh, and they have an opportunity to express their opinion um, on one question or per week. At the end of, uh, of this, of team blogging, they reflect and there it's, um, and one of the topics may be how, um, how to react to hate speech, what kinds of problems students uh, face and uh, <clears throat> So this is the way uh, and the place where they can safely, uh, that is very important, safely express their opinion in the written form, okay? Another opportunity or another activity is picture of the month's contest or competition. Uh, there is, here you can see um, a link and there, for every month there is a topic. Uh, so teachers, I usually encourage my students and my colleagues also do this, uh, encourage my students to take part in a contest uh, and uh, students can upload a photo and, uh, and write what they want to say. The winner is the person who has more likes and comments, who gets more likes and comments from peers uh, not only from uh, these may be the um, classmates, schoolmates, or peers, or other students who um, who are registered, um, who have accounts, who are interested, who take part in this contest. Okay, next uh, activity is so-called big questions. Big questions. Uh, there are four of them. Students pick up these questions, one of the questions they like, or all of them. Um, and they express their opinion. Uh, one of the questions, for example, now is, imagine that 
you had an opportunity to meet your prime minister what would you like to discuss okay and the alumni program uh, some active students who uh, have already left school and uh, they may be either university students or college students who would like uh, who volunteer to um, like to do some um, some work for the uh, on this platform uh, this year I recommended one of my active participants of generation global project uh, one of my uh, ex students and uh, she had an interview with a manager coordinator from Great Britain and uh, she is going to be a moderator a volunteer moderator on this platform at least for a year so it's like a great honor for the student and it's a great honor for me um, that uh, student that the student uh, will um, will get some new experience uh, will um, will improve uh, not only level of English but will improve a lot of skills will, uh, will develop critical thinking and uh, will be active like an active participant uh, of moderators of this program. Uh, please, next slide. Uh -huh. uh, so let me say some uh, some words about advantages of general global dialogue. Okay, yes, they appear. So first of all, maybe one of the most important uh, things is that this project is absolute is absolutely safe for students and uh, <clears throat> uh, so we can see that students exchange information uh, they they get really good emotions while um, uh, during the dialogue with their peers during team blogging they get useful experience the students uh, we live in a um, multicultural world uh, and our communities are multicultural and it's important to uh, to learn students uh, to respect cultures of others to live in uh, in a friendly way to respect to, uh, <clears throat> okay to avoid various uh, misunderstanding conflicts okay of course students learn some skills of business English manners well, uh, they become more confident in um, in expressing their emotions, uh, their experience, their feelings, in sharing their knowledge. They become more um, confident in using in using English. However, using English here is not uh, is not the priority. Okay, the dialogue itself is the priority. Okay. Of course, students mm, learn about diversity of the world. That is also of great importance. Uh, and uh, students create positive image of uh, your school uh, and of the and the country on the global level. Well, uh, thank you. Let's let's go to next slide, please. So you, here you can see um, the countries that my school, that my students uh, have had dialogues with. Um, we had a lot of a lot of dialogues with schools from India, the United Arab Emirates, Indonesia, Philippines, Pakistan, Canada, uh, the United Kingdom, the United States of America, as I have already mentioned, Italy, and of course, and uh, with some schools from Ukraine. Uh, of course, maybe because of time difference, it's not so easy to match uh, with our uh, peers, with our colleagues from Canada and the USA, but uh, we managed to do it and there, um, it was really um, all, all dialogues with any school, with any country is really great experience <clears throat> and uh, um, students uh, get uh, uh, so, so good, so good emotions uh, after the during the dialogue and after the dialogue. Okay, next slide, please. 
Um, here you can see the themes that we have discussed. Uh, festivals, for example, tra which includes traditions and celebrations. I, I would recommend uh, colleagues, uh, those who would like to join this project, this is the topic that is maybe the easiest, the easiest for students to start, okay? Then values and beliefs of communities, the art of expression, uh, it includes uh, or may include beauty in communities, ways of expression, beauty in different religions by means of art, paintings, architecture, and so on. Uh, next topic is human rights and uh, hate speech. Uh, in brackets you can see the wet guests. It means that uh, 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 we had uh, a conference, a video, uh, a video conference, an online dialogue, and we had guests. Um, expert uh, from International Institute of uh, Girl Politics. It was um, interesting for students uh, not only to listen to their peers from other countries, but also to uh, hear uh, experts, to hear uh, scientists. Uh, uh, so uh, interesting and uh, useful. Um, okay, so medical ethics was uh, and uh, was another interesting topic and useful, and power of narrative. So I should say that all these uh, uh, topics uh, go all the year round. That is why uh, we can pick up uh, the date, the time. Uh, that is. Mm, that matches your school timetable and uh, your lessons or uh, whatever. Okay, next slide, please. Here you can see uh, uh, some photos. Um, have a look. This is the way that um, your students uh, can see on the screen. So, first of all, the program, uh, I mean the, the technology, the equipment is very simple. Uh, you just need the computer or uh, a laptop. Uh, of course, if you have a projector, this is a plus. Okay, so on the screen you can see the facilitator. Okay, uh, the facilitator, and then uh, here you can see there are four schools. Usually, four schools. The program supports four schools, so students can see their peers on the screen. In fact, uh, this is my student uh, is speaking. Okay, so and there, another photo is uh, uh, oh, can you go back? Oh, can you go back to the previous slide, please? Yes, uh, this is a photo, the same photo uh, of the same conference. However, the students of Indonesia speak, they, they can see them, or we can see them uh, like. Uh, in a big picture, yes, and all the rest are listening. Okay, so what, and this is just, these are my students uh, in my classroom who are listening to their peers. Uh, what is important, um, or what skills are important here? Speaking and listening skills are also important because students have an opportunity, and this is an opportunity, and this is a must-do, that they ask questions on the information that they hear from, from their peers. Uh, so, mm, listening is of great importance. Okay, thank you. Next next slide, please. Well, this is a photo of online dialogue. Uh, so, if we have an opportunity, mm, we can, we, we, if we can use either tablets or students' personal uh, personal mobile phones. phones. In, in this case, uh, uh, my students, uh, well, in my school we have some tablets, so I brought some to my classroom and students brought also their tablets and uh, they enter their accounts, they pick up a question and uh, write uh, comments, uh, share their experience, share their feelings. Okay, some students can do it in even um, together, like uh, for example, these two students. Yes. Okay. Uh, somebody is uh, knows better English. Somebody needs some help. So uh, let's go on. 
Okay, another team blogging. Yes, a team blogging. Mm, the, yeah, the topic. Not, sorry. Uh, a bit not done here, so uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the topic is how. Please try to finish. Okay. Okay, let's go on. Thank you. Besides, uh, just some some words are. Uh, uh, so we we uh, teachers can uh, get uh, certificates. So there is an opportunity to get certificates, awards, and there are three levels of awards, uh, and the information is on their uh, platform. So, as I have already said, uh, this platform is really safe, and it has some a lot of teaching resources that uh, teachers yes, can use indeed. in so, their uh, lessons uh, while preparing talk, for. Perfect uh, talk. I uh, have a look at, at the chat, uh, but maybe we we can uh, uh, thank just you go so back. Much. Uh, to, uh, to uh, Stella first. Now, in general, we have just a few more minutes uh, for this time slot. Uh, there was a question, Stella, for you uh, about uh, the age uh, of uh, the students that you used uh, your activities for, mm -hmm. or you designed the activities like with with the, with the bin and yes. and these things. Uh, so, uh, can, Stella, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Okay, we do. okay. So I've already answered in the chat. So uh, the role play, any age, any age at all. Uh, the cookie trash, kids from kindergarten and upwards. Look, it doesn't have to be about online hate or online bullying. It could be about other things, about bullying in real life uh, as well. Now, so the cookie trash from kindergarten upwards but can even be used with adults, then you can modify the um, trash can, something they hate maybe, I don't know, Donald Trump. That's why we call ours Donald. So we use that with adults. And uh, the rest, any age. OK, great. Uh, then a question for, for Natalia. It was sent uh, on, the, on the presenter's chat, uh, but uh, I, I can maybe rephrase it a bit. Is it possible to join the, the program uh, Generation Global as an individual teacher? Or does the school need to take an account? Uh, no. Natalia? Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. surely. It is possible to join uh, the program. The teacher registers uh, as the school manager on this platform. Not as an individual so teacher, but the teacher registers teacher. the school. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Besides, Great. yes, uh, there is a question. Uh, where did you hear about this pro program? You can write my name, no problem, yes. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, so I'm a bit conscious of, of time, although we only had two speakers. Uh, well, good for you that you uh, were not restricted by timing, because normally, yeah, everyone gets a, a very short time slot, and we, we thought of having five minutes, but it was a bit more, but uh, very, very interesting. So those two ideas, um, they will find the, the way to other classrooms, I'm, I'm quite sure. Um, I don't see, ah, does it have to be a state school, Natalia? Can private uh, language schools join as well? Is there uh, a difference in, in types of schools? So, Natalia, you can there answer. There is no difference. There is no difference in types of school. Uh, the only uh, thing that I uh, failed to mention is that students should be 12 plus. 12 plus. Ah. No difference. Okay. Okay, great. So, uh, if you don't mind, I would like to end um, the call here. I'm very happy that you were here with me, and uh, I thank the speakers once again for their time they put into it and uh, for volunteering to, to speak. Uh, so, I hope um, you also uh, enjoyed uh, some bits of, of the MOOC that is now finishing, and uh, I look forward to, to seeing your, uh, your action plans that you are creating and uh, share your ideas that uh, will be shared uh, later on. So have a very nice evening, and um, 
I uh, will close the meeting now. So uh, see you back soon and uh, have a nice evening. Thank you. Have a nice evening too.